All right, uh, hello and, and uh, welcome back to Crock of Time. I'm your host, Corey. Uh, not a chef, not a food uh, professional. I'm just someone who likes to tinker and loves food and fermentation. So, uh, thanks for joining us today for the, I don't know, holiday, uh, holiday special stream. <laughs> Um, we're not fermenting today, actually. Uh, not really. Um, instead, here we go. Well, we're making this stuff. Uh, this, this is eggnog. Uh, this is actually what I have left from last year. Uh, so a uh, one-year aged boozy eggnog. Um, that we will be tasting alongside the fresh stuff that we make today. So I'll set this aside for now. Uh, all right, let's, let's set it over here. All right, so yeah, um, feel free to uh, ask any questions that might come up. If you uh, let me know if you like eggnog, if you don't, if you've ever made it before, um, if you have a special technique. Um, there's a, there's a lot of different variations of eggnog, but uh, they seem, honestly, all very American in one way or another. <laughs> um, which is why uh, today, if I uh, switch over to the, ah, the recipe card, uh, so that uh, anybody who wants to uh, refer back to this as soon as possible in the video, uh, they can do that. So, um, yeah, I'm using very American measurements today uh because this is a, <laughs> this is a very american thing uh so i hope you don't mind but um uh hopefully after this uh after this stream and maybe i get some uh, pictures or something like that then i can put up a proper recipe on the website crockoftime.com um with uh, you know with uh, metric measurements as well so anyways um why don't we get to it and we can refer back to this later but let's uh let's move over to the uh make station mm -mm -mm, without accidentally disconnecting my camera would be great oh wow that's very bright mm. <laughs> didn't expect the uh, sun to be shining so brightly today let's see if i Ooh. Mm, okay, I don't think I can close that today because I have uh, I have persimmons drying up in the window, so we might just have to deal with it, unfortunately. <laughs> um, okay, so I have everything uh, pre-measured, weighed out, uh, etc. So what we have here, obviously, um, our eggs. Now, uh, if we look back at the recipe card here. Right, um, so this recipe is for a full dozen eggs. Uh, and generally, I, I would probably make a batch with a dozen eggs. Um, however, I'm splitting that batch in half uh, this year. Uh, we're not even going to be in town for Christmas. And also, um, I might have to wait until the day after or so, uh, but more about that later. So um, so I'm, I'm using six eggs today. Uh, then uh, the recipe calls for a pound of sugar. I have uh, half a pound already weighed out, eight ounces. Um, calls for a full quart of, of whole milk and heavy cream. So I have two cups each, one pint of uh, cream and whole milk here. And then uh, I guess the only thing that I don't have really measured out, of course, we've got some vanilla here. Um, we have back here the uh, liquors that I'm using in this recipe. Uh, feel free to mix and match if there are things you like and things you don't like. Uh, but this is generally my preferred uh, mix. Um, and this thing right here, uh, I love showing this off. This is a little nutmeg grater. Uh, I cannot even remember where I got it, probably at some kind of... Um, uh, flea market or something like that. But anyways, in here is actually a little holder for uh, my nutmeg, my fresh nutmeg here. And then this thing uh, pops back over top and we'll grate it on top of there. And then we'll put it back in here to store it away. Um, 
but yeah, uh, so fresh created nutmeg right there. So yeah, that's, that's, I mean, this is a really, 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 honestly, uh, simple recipe. It does not involve, um, you know, separating the eggs into yolks and whites, doing different things with them, um, all that sort of stuff. Um, you might see the egg separation stuff more for, um, like fresh eggnog recipes. So uh, stuff that's meant to be made and drunk the same day. And generally speaking, the whites are uh, whisked to, you know, uh, add air to them. And then it's kind of folded in. So it's really got, uh, uh, you know, really body kind of um, foamy on top, right? That's not, that's not what we're making here. Um, and also, in fact, this also doesn't include any sort of egg heating or tempering or anything like that right so um yeah, you might be wondering if this is safe right? <laughs> right well the thing that makes it safe is the alcohol that we're going to be adding um the alcohol that we're adding in quite uh large quantities let's switch back to this here camera um yeah uh, large quantity uh, large enough quantity of alcohol at least per you know per egg and and the um the volume of liquid we've got. Um, I will have to try to find and link to the study, or maybe I'll, I'll post this in, in the recipe itself. But um, there was a study done about eggnog, kind of specifically, right? Or at least eggs and salmonella and alcohol. And um, the researchers found that even when they added salmonella, uh, salmonella, um, purposefully right to to the mixture uh, after 21 days the salmonella was killed off um, with enough you know with enough alcohol in it um, so I apologize if I don't have the math here for you uh, hopefully I can do that in the post later but um, that's that's what we're doing and that's why this eggnog is not just boozy but also aged um, Amongst some other things, right? So, so, so part of, you know, aging in general, you know, allows the flavors to kind of mingle and mellow out over time. But part of this is also ensuring the safety of, of the eggs. Um, and that's, you know, like I said, that's, that's roughly 21 days, right? And I'm pushing it a little bit because today is December 5th and I would love to have a little bit of this on Christmas. I probably will anyways, uh, you know, let's, let's, you know, put up a big ol' uh, disclaimer, <laughs> right, that uh, you should probably age this for a month-ish, you know, over 21 days would be safest, um, if you are very young, you probably shouldn't be drinking this anyways, because it's got booze in it, or if you are a very old, or you have a compromised immune system, Maybe, maybe you shouldn't be drinking this at all. Maybe buy some from the store, um, add some alcohol if you want, um, or, you know, go through the trouble of finding a different recipe that involves uh, heating the eggs to a safe temperature. But, um, but yeah, this is how I'm doing it. This is how I've done it for several years now, and uh, I'm still, I'm still kicking. So anyways, that's, that's the end of the disclaimer. Um, I am also... Uh, I'm going to be tasting some of this today, um, fresh, uh, which is not really the safest thing, um, but 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 I'm doing it for science. I, I want to I want to see. Oh gosh, the first egg that I crack and I, I got show in it. Um, I really want to see if I can, you know, what the huge difference is between something that is just um, just made and. Um, and the year old eggnog, I, you know, obviously um, it would be maybe better if I had the already pre, you know, aged by at least a couple weeks or a month or so and try that next to the year old. So I might still do that um, on or around Christmas, but for now, we're going to see, we're going to see what the uh, fresh next to one year tastes like after I finish making it. So I am just cracking all my eggs right in here. Again, super simple. Probably the simplest way to make eggnog, honestly. Um, I have, at least the first first time, 
or maybe first couple of times that I did this, the age eggnog, I, uh, I went through the trouble of separating the yolks from the whites and whipping the egg whites and all that, all that stuff. I might have even tempered the eggs, I, I don't remember. But um, after, you know, a couple days, a week, a whole month of um, sitting in the fridge, well, first of all, it tends to separate quite a bit. At least, I think it might just generally separate a bit anyways over time because of the cream and milk especially. Um, so you will have to shake this up occasionally. Um, but, um, but yeah, it's going to homogenize essentially over time, or at least you kind of hope for that. There won't be a frothy top to this kind of eggnog. Now, you could... Um, you could leave the egg yolks out. Um, I've seen I've seen recipes that do that. Leave the egg uh, uh, the egg whites out. Make this with yolks. Obviously, we'll have to do something with all the whites soon, right? But then, you know, if you're serving it fresh on some sort of Christmas party or whatever, maybe maybe whip up the whip up a separate batch of egg whites, and then you'll have to do something with the yolks, um, and you can fold that in. Um, that's you know that's up to you. So, I have just, you know, just really whipping the, um, the eggs together. A lot, of, a lot of recipes will just use egg yolks, especially in the aged eggnog, and I'm just not bothering. Um, this, by the way, this recipe is, uh, is based on Elton Brown's recipe. Um, these are the actual liquors that he used, and I, I find that I like that combination as well. I've tweaked it a little bit. Um, but he only uses egg yolks, uh, so take that as you will, up to you. Uh, Alright, so I am going to add in the sugar first, and I'm just going to whip this all together. If you're uh, doing a whole dozen eggs, I'd recommend using the stand mixer. Hey, Fragnum Opus is in the uh, chat. Nice to see you. The uh, lovely music that you're hearing is courtesy of Fragnum Opus. Fragnum Opus. I'm sorry for mangling the, <laughs> the name right there. Um, but yeah, he did a whole uh, kind of concept album for Crock of Time. Uh, I don't know, that was last year, I think. Or maybe it was longer ago, I don't remember. But... Um, Go check it out. It's a great album. That's what's playing here. Gosh, it is so, like, bright on me that, like, you can hardly see what I'm doing, huh? How's that? <laughs> So yeah, anyways, like I was saying, use a stand mixer for this part. It's great. Um, stand mixers are great. I love them. Or um, hand whisk. Hand whisk works too. Um, I'm really just looking for this to be incorporated together and not super grainy. It is going to sit for about a month, so... It's not super important that you have like lovely ribbons or anything like that. We're not baking. Alright. That's good enough for me. Okay, now um, I'm just going to add in my uh, milk and cream. Actually, I'll add in the uh, pinch of salt. Uh, or you could measure it out directly. The recipe calls for, I believe, a half teaspoon. Let me see if I can do this and this. Whatever. Um, yeah, so a half teaspoon of salt. I'm going to use a fourth, fourth teaspoon. Just a pinch, really. Oh, 
Okay, in goes the cream. In goes the milk. Obviously, if you're only using yolks, your eggnog will be much darker. But I can't be bothered to deal with separated yolks and whites. Okay, and then I'm going to add uh, a large amount of vanilla extract. Um, the recipe itself calls for a whole tablespoon. And again, I'm having everything, so half a tablespoon of vanilla. Okay. And then, time for the liquors. So, oh my gosh, I have to, uh, have to figure out maybe a different streaming time or something if it's going to be so, uh, so bright. Uh, does that help? I think that helps a little bit. Not really. <laughs> okay, so anyways, um, keep that over there, keep that over there. Alright, I've got uh, nothing super top shelf or anything, um, but of course you can use the super top shelf stuff if you'd like. Um, so I've just got some bourbon here, not too much left, but this is, uh, you know, Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. Um, I have some brandy, right, or cognac. If you want to get really fancy, you can buy cognac. Um, but it's basically the same thing. And then here I have uh, rum, and it's a dark rum, but it's not just any dark rum. It is Jamaican rum. Uh, this, to me, is crucial. Um, the taste that you get from Jamaican, Jamaican style, whatever rum, uh, is going to be different than just kind of run-of-the-mill rum. Um, it's got a it's got a kind of a funkiness to it but in a really good way not like a I don't know just trust me on this if you haven't tried uh, Jamaican rum do yourself a favor uh, this is what they had when I went to the store to, to stock up I haven't used it before so unfortunately it might be a little bit different than the stuff that I used in last year's eggnog but um, let's see how it goes so. Oops, I should have opened this before the stream started. Um, what, are you, uh, are you looking at that? What, just, uh, it's a secret. <laughs> no, this, um, these are cured egg yolks. So I, I've been wanting to experiment with these, um, and I thought that maybe an eggnog, especially mine, where I don't, you know, I... I don't just use yolks, it might actually benefit from some cured uh, cured egg yolk. Uh, but I don't really know. I don't really know how I would incorporate this, so I'm just going to hold off. I might try out, you know, after making it, uh, either, either grating it on top and see how that is, or, you know, seeing if it will dissolve. I'm not sure, but experiments. Um, so anyways, to make it rum, let's... Give this a sniff. <laughs> yes, Nick. I have the cured egg yolk. I mean, that's what you could do with the egg yolks if you're gonna if you're gonna not put the whites in and then put the whites in at some later point. Hmm. This is nice. Um, at least the smell of it. I want to take a little sip. Just to see how it tastes, just the tiniest little sip. Mmm, that is lovely. It's fantastic. All right, so um, yeah, I'm just gonna do just like everything else. It's been pretty even measurements, so we're gonna do pretty even measurements here. So again, oh geez, and I, I, I'm still on this recipe card. Sorry, um, but as you can see here, one cup of each bourbon or uh, each um, liquor. Um, for you know three cups total. Let me go back to uh, back to this so we can actually see what we're doing, right? Um, right. So having everything again. So I have a half cup measure. So let's just dump it right in. Half cup. 
of Jamaican rum. This, I mean, if I had to choose only one thing, only one liquor to put in, I would choose the Jamaican rum. So, if you don't want to have to buy three bottles, if you don't stock any of this already, get the Jamaican rum. You won't regret it. Uh, and then if I had to choose one to leave out and only use two, I'd probably leave out the whiskey. That's just me. Okay, so then we've got brandy or cognac. And finally, we have the whiskey. I mean, I guess, in a way, if you really want it to be American, you kind of need Kentucky whiskey, don't you? Um, so, let's see. Do we have enough? Yes, we have enough. Oops. All right. Pretty much just use that up. Okay. And, uh, before I forget... Last but not least, we need to grate our nutmeg. So, that's what I'm going to do here. Grate the nutmeg. If you have a you know, if you have already ground nutmeg, that's fine, of course. Um, I just really like using this thing, and <laughs> I like fresh nutmeg. Um, but uh, also, honestly, I think that this kind of grater is, is better than, say, a microplane. Because a microplane grater will kind of give you little slivers. Very little, of course, but slivers nonetheless. And this is really giving us a, a really fine ground texture. So... Um, you know, keep that in mind because it's going into a liquid, so you don't really want big chunks. At least I don't. Uh, up to you. Um, so I think for for a full batch of twelve eggs, I think I have. Let me jump back to the recipe card here. I think uh, so. I'm I'm looking for a teaspoon of ground nutmeg. So that's like probably roughly <laughs> roughly the amount that I've already um, ground up there that's like half of a half of a full nutmeg so if you're curious how much to grind if you're doing fresh if you're doing 12 eggs a half if you're doing just six like me you probably don't need that much all right so then we have this lovely amount of nutmeg. I'm going to use most of it because I like it. Toss that in there and we'll use a little bit of that as garnish on top when we serve it. And that's it. <laughs> this is our eggnog um, fully prepared essentially. So Here's the thing, though, right? So remember when I talked about the um, the whole purpose behind aging with this is that we're not cooking the eggs. We're using the alcohol to kill any bacteria like salmonella, okay? Um, that means, again, disclaimer, <laughs> that means that when I taste this today, I'm doing it at my own risk. So... I'm only going to have a little bit just for, um, you know, just for flavor reference, right? But this is not something that you make and drink immediately. I want to be clear about that. This is something that needs to be aged. So, uh, now that we got that out of the way, now I should have kind of done this so you can see my face. Hi. <laughs> um, so, uh, I have pre-sanitized some, uh, some bottles here. There we go. Uh, this is Star San. Um, you don't have to have a sanitizer just to do this. Make sure that they're just really well washed. At least, like, put through a dishwasher cycle would probably be best. Um, but I've had these clean, so I just uh, so I just sanitize them. The, these, by the way, they, they, so 
these bottles come from a local uh, Ohio dairy called Hartzler's. Um, it's, you know, Hartzler family dairy in Wooster, Ohio. Um, so every year they put out a special, you know, Christmas themed um, eggnog in these fancy bottles. And every year I buy them, so every year I keep uh, at least one <laughs> of these bottles. Here I've got another, um, got another year here. Uh, this was, let's see, 2014, and this was, I don't know, it actually doesn't say, this is kind of nice, so no year on this one. Um, but anyways, that's, um, I buy this every year, even though I'm making eggnog, um, because it's the, it is the most amazing eggnog that I've ever tasted. I don't, I don't buy any other cartons. Uh, the only eggnog that I'll buy is Hartzler's for a good reason. Um, so if you have a local dairy that puts out eggnog and you haven't tried it yet, probably check it out um, so anyways um, so the this um, I'm, I, may, I might let it kind of settle a little bit because it's really foamy right now um, but um, it's not gonna matter that much so I'm gonna fill these up uh, afterwards but I'm not gonna do that right now because I want to taste so here we go I've got these nice little uh, um, Little eggnog glasses. I don't know. I use these for eggnog every year. And uh, in one of these, I am going to put a little bit of this fresh eggnog. So here we go. And that's all I'm going to put in for now. Okay, um, and now, actually, I'm sorry that you can hear my dishwasher, probably. Um, apologies, but I probably should not have run the dishwasher until later. Ah, the glare is finally gone. Okay, we're going to come in here, uh, you know, with the fancy uh, Christmas holiday backdrop here. There we go. Ah, <laughs> all right. Let me go get the uh, let me get the glasses. Okay. So here we go. Here is the fresh stuff. There. Um, all right. Now, this stuff is the year-old aged eggnog. So made in the same way, um, just with slightly different rum, but whatever. Uh, mostly the rest of the ingredients are the same. Um, so yeah, this will separate a little bit if it just sits in the fridge, but shake it up and it comes right back together. Um, if you can, especially if you're aging it for that long, well, I'm not going to say that I recommend it yet, <laughs> uh, but we're going to try these side by side. But if you are aging it for any length of time, you probably will need to come and shake it up a little bit. Uh, we're not using any sort of industrial chemicals to homogenize this and keep it keep it stable so one year aged eggnog right there uh, and then of course because because I have to because this is the standard by which I hold myself to to eggnog this is Hartzler's um, this year's Hartzler eggnog for 2021 uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of mad by the way because uh, Apparently they put out a limited edition printed bottle, uh, and then the majority of them are just kind of put on here with this sticker, uh, and I missed this. So all of the ones that I've been collecting over the years like this printed, um, they've, I guess, maybe expanded and needed to cut some costs. I don't know. Um, I am That makes me sad, Hartzler. Sorry. <laughs> it does. But, I don't know, the nice thing is that if I've got a couple bottles, I can probably rip this off and have nice, um, you know, clean um, jugs here without the Hartzler stuff on it. So, anyways, I'm going to put the um, Hartzler nog in this one. Uh, you can tell maybe right away that um, the color is um, different, right? So this is much yellower. Uh, and it actually does say on the label here that they use, quote, pasteurized sugared egg yolks. So 
no uh, no egg whites, just the egg yolks. So I don't know, maybe I'll have to give that a try at some point. Just the yolks. Uh, I'm sure that uh, my wife would not mind if I then used all those whites to make some Swiss meringue buttercream frosting and put them in some donuts. But uh, sorry, I've already used them, so. Um, Nick is saying, and um, apologize, Fragnum Opus, um, I don't know when you said this because I've missed the chat here, that uh, he also still has some from last year. I don't know if you're talking about mine or if you're talking about the Hartzler. If you if it is the Hartzler, throw that away. <laughs> it is not preserved, but if it is mine, well, uh, you can taste it along with me. <laughs> so, um, all right, so hopefully I still have these in the right order. This is the aged stuff. This is the fresh stuff. Hold on, let me so I can see what I'm doing here. Um, so, oh gosh. Trying to see if there's much of a color difference. So the aged stuff is slightly less, um, slightly yes, less yellow. Uh, this fresh stuff has a little bit more yellowness to it. And I don't know, honestly, that could potentially be just a difference in the eggs um, that I use. This year, I definitely got some, you know, farm, uh, you know, free roam kind of uh, eggs from a local farm, uh, and those tend to have, I think, um, darker yolks, but I don't know. So anyways, uh, here we go. I'm gonna taste the fresh stuff first. Bottoms up. Not as harsh as I was expecting. Honestly. I mean, if it weren't for the fact that uh, it's not particularly safe to drink this in large quantities right away, I'd drink that. That's pretty darn good, actually. Uh, one more taste here. It's creamy, of course. Um, I mean, the liquor's there, don't get me wrong. Um, but it's not, pow, hit you, you know, hit you right in the face kind of, uh, you know, taking a shot, um, sort of. But um, it's definitely strong. A little sip uh, is definitely strong, but it's good to sip. Um, yeah, the nutmeg, the vanilla especially comes through. I mean, honestly, I with, wish it was a little bit thicker because um, I kind of expect eggnog to be very thick. Um, and it's not, honestly, it's it's pretty, I suppose, runny by that, that standard. Um, let's see, this, this is the Hartzler stuff. It's not all that thick, but it's a little bit thicker. So anyways, all right, so let's try the one year aged nog. Bottoms up. Hmm, definitely a difference. Honestly, I want to say that the the booze is more apparent in the one year aged nog than it is in the freshly made stuff, which is a little bit counterintuitive. Let me let me just check again to make sure. Yeah. Hmm. Honestly, the fresh stuff has a, almost um, this buttery quality that I'm always chasing because of this, because of this stuff right here. This stuff is, of course, yes, sweet, but also has this buttery richness that um, is very difficult to capture. And I, honestly, I think that that gets a little bit lost after a year. Still good, still drinking it. <laughs> um, don't get me wrong, mm. but maybe one year isn't all that you know. Um, you know, aging indefinitely isn't necessarily a good thing in in all cases. I really wish that I had uh, the you know one month that I generally go for uh, to compare, and maybe maybe when this is you know a month old, 
a whip up just like a tiny fraction of a batch just with a single egg um, so that I can do the complete comparison. That'd be interesting. So, I don't know. I think my verdict on the eight and the year old age nog is that maybe not worth it if you if you're trying to do it on purpose. I didn't I didn't purposefully do year old um, aged nog. Uh, I just happen to have some left because I made too much. Uh, but um, if you do have some left over, it'll still be good to drink in a year. Um, Maybe I should put the disclaimer up again, um, because maybe I'm not um, uh, an expert, but I believe, yes, that it should be safe. Um, it is interesting to see how the, I don't know, I mean, I, I suppose there are still enzymes in the fresh eggs. Um, my hypothesis, anyways, is that those enzymes will act over the course of a year to break down some of those um, proteins over time. Um, so... You know, less yellow, less uh, buttery. Yeah, slightly harsher on the back of the throat. And again, maybe it's because I used a different rum. I don't know, but I, I think there's a difference there. And of course, um, before we move on, finally, I do have the Hartzler's Fresh Non-Boozy, by the way. Um, just regular old eggs and sugar and cream, basically. Um, Mm. Oh god, that stuff is so good. <laughs> mm. uh, one year I will do some mini uh, little little tiny batches, experimental batches, to try to see if I can get anywhere close to, uh, you know, a local dairy's uh, eggnog. I, I, don't, I don't know if it's even possible, because they have access to the very, the freshest of the fresh stuff. Um, It's funny, the, so I think that mine is sweeter. But only slightly. Um, but it's that, oh, buttery creaminess that I'm really looking for. So, you know, maybe if you're trying to chase that, you might not get it with the boozy stuff that puts an edge on it no matter what. Hmm. But that's some uh, that's some darn good stuff. All right, so there we there we go. Um, fresh stuff still wouldn't uh, recommend necessarily drinking immediately. Again, just to reiterate for the hundredth time here, because this is uh, raw eggs in here, that it needs time to age, uh, so that the salmonella and anything else is killed off. Um, a good a good a good uh, a time to shoot for is 21 days so if you if you start your nog uh, a couple days earlier than i have so if you start it on december 1st or even right after thanksgiving uh you'll be good to go and you'll be able to enjoy it on uh on christmas and i'm going to do that anyways um uh, but um i probably won't purposefully age uh eggnog any longer than that that's that's my uh that's my definitive uh, decision. Still good though. <laughs> I, I at least I'll have something to drink uh, during December while I wait for this this new batch to be ready for Christmas. All right. Um, so, anyways, yeah. Thank you all for uh, joining me today on on our little uh, eggnog uh, experiment uh, taste test. Uh, I am going to put that eggnog that we just made into these bottles, fill them up. Uh, I'm going to put them in the back of the fridge, and they're going to sit there until Christmas, although I will occasionally go in and shake them up a bit just to, uh, you know, because they, they'll, 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 they'll separate a little bit. Um, so maybe once a week or so, I'll go and shake it. But that's that's re that's really it. That's all you got to do. Um, put it together, and let time take care of the rest. So, thank you for stopping by. Uh, again, this was Crock of Time. I'm your host Corey. 
uh, and this time I'm going to remember to put up the end card. <laughs>